And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Don't confuse Samarkand with the, there's an older game that was designed by Sid Saxon which involved trading, going around and getting goods and trading them. Well, the theme hasn't changed much here in this game, and in fact the trading is still there, and, but there's, it, it's different. When you open this game, you'll, you'll notice there's a lot of little camels in it. You might think, hey, it's like Through the Desert, a very popular game by Reiner Knizia, and indeed it feels slightly like that. But this is its own beast. There, there's some interesting features to this game. It's one that will attract a certain kind of player, I suppose. And before we get into that, why don't we look at how the game plays. Here's a map of the board, albeit upside down, and over here are five of the families included in each game, and you can pretend that I went to the effort to set up the other five the same way, but I did five for you, dear watchers, so that should be good enough. Each family has a pile of camels here, ooh, look at the little wooden camels, very cute, and has two people that you can marry into that family, for example the Huns, and, you know, there's whichever version you wish to marry, they're there for you. And then there's five handshakes, there's four white and one dark one. And that's on each of these families. Each family also has a different number. That's the cost of marrying into that family. And each family also has a starting location on the board. So you can see this is where black would start. Players get a couple cards to start the game with. These cards match some of these resources on the board. Each resource has a token that's placed on top of that, and again, you'll have to pretend that I did that for this game. And players get some money to start the game. Fabulous. On a player's turn, they have one of two things that they can do. They can marry into one of these families. So let's say, for example, I want to marry into the Hun family. I would therefore pay the Huns three, because that's what the costs are. I put that money in a Hun's treasury. I marry the beautiful Hun woman, place her in front of me. I'm now married into the Black family. Fantastic. Or I can marry into one of the other color families. For example, I could pay later on and marry into the orange family. The, and those are the families that I'm part of by paying money. That, that also gives me the opportunity to draw more of these cards from the deck. There is an upper limit depending on how many players you have in the game. But you want to get those cards in your hand because they're worth points. Instead of marrying into a family, my other option is to place a camel on the board. The first one has to be placed on a starting spot. After that, they simply go to an adjacent spot. Now, you can place one or you can place two, but placing two costs one dollar from the treasury. And since there's only two people to be married, and they have to be married by two different folks in the game, then the, the most, for example, that the Huns are going to have is they're only going to have six uh, coins in their treasury. But if you pay one of the coins from the treasury, you can build two camels. Camels can go anywhere you want as long as they're adjacent to camels of the same color. They can even go into the water spots. If a camel goes into a spot where there is one of these tokens, you may take that token and place it in front of you at the end of the game. Voila, it's worth a victory point. And if someone else happens to have a card, let's say I move a camel into this space with the shell. If anybody has a card for the shell, they say, ha ha. Oh, no, that's kind of anticlimactic. Aha, there's the shell card. I have that. You can immediately sell that card for $3. That's certainly worth doing. It's another way to get money and so that you can use that to buy more families in the game. Uh, or you can hold on to it for the end of the game and keep it secret and keep it safe. If camels meet each other, let's say there's two lines of camels and they meet each other, the first time they meet each other, the player who causes the meeting is going to take one of the handshakes. Now each color can only meet each other one time and so they get the handshakes from the different colors that have met uh, and that's one of the ways the game ends. There's a reason that this is taken off, is that's to show that that, has, that color has met somebody. When all the handshakes are gone from one of the families, then the game ends. Or, when all the families have established at least one trading relationship. That's why these top ones are a different color. When you, there's, you can see no more dark handshakes on the board, then the game also ends. At that point, everyone's going to reveal their cards that they have. 
if, for example, I held onto the shell card now, if I have a, if there is a camel on this spot that is of a family that I control, this card is worth four points. If there's a card from another family on it, then that, that's worth one point. So the most you can have for any single card, I could have a card with both of my families on it, that would be eight points. That gets me points. Everything else gets you points according to this really handy dandy scorecard. If you have a dollar, or a denarii, I'm sorry, it's worth one point. If you have two denarii, it's worth two points. If you have ten denarii, it's worth ten points. Aren't you glad they included this? For every victory point token you have, that's worth a point. For every victory point token you have, that's worth a point. I suppose. <laughs> I'm always asking for player aids, but this may be pushing it a little too far. If you need this player aid, then I'm not sure you should be playing this game anyway. So, that's basically how the game is played in a nutshell. There's definitely shadows, and maybe more than shadows, but there's definitely strategy in the game. In which, you know, wh wh how many families do you marry into? How quickly do you do so? Where do you move the camels? When do you reveal the card? Do you reveal the card to get that more money to use during the course of the game? Or do you, you know, hang on to the cards and keep them for points at the end of the game? So there's that kind of back and forth leeway. Uh, the map is interesting. This, the, the, the traders in the middle cost more money because they have the opportunity to meet more families. And so there's some interesting facts there. Uh, it feels a bit like through the desert as you place the camels, but since that's the only thing that's identical, other you know, placing camels, I wouldn't consider them different I mean, or similar. The game doesn't really feel like any other game that I've played. I mean, it has different bits and mechanics from different games. And there's a lot of joking about marrying in all these families. Ah, you know, my son married their son, or I married four wives, or, you know, there's ha ha ha, all those jokes. And the game really isn't that fast. If you want it to go quicker, you can run out of pile of handshakes if you want. You can really just go out of your way to make sure the game ends. So it's a fairly quick game. I found it a bit bland for me. Although other people I played with thought it was an interesting game, it's certainly a game for uh, those that I would say are in the Euro game department. It has a theme, the theme works, it's trading, not one of my favorite themes, but certainly one that I'm not upset with. I do like the different families. I like how you're not a family, but you can have a controlling factor in a family. Uh, and almost, train gamers don't kill me here, but it almost feels like a very, 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 very light version of one of the, the, the train games where you're buying shares of different companies and then controlling that company to some degree. Uh, but I guess the best way to say is if you thought it sounded interesting from me showing you how it worked, well then you'll probably like it. Otherwise, this might be one you want to pass on. It's kind of an iffy thing. Me, not my style. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.